Hey everyone, Joe with the Idaho Prepper Channel, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a flagpole just like this. Stay tuned, this should be a good one. All right, so a few years ago when my family and I first purchased this home, one of the first things I wanted to do was put a flagpole in front of our property. And the my original thinking was I was gonna get a flagpole, or I wanted a flagpole that was kind of like the traditional flagpoles that you see in front of schoolyards or firehouses where it's just, one continuous piece of steel and you have a rope with a pulley and you can pull the flags up and down, right? You know, you know what kind of flagpole I'm talking about. And I started pricing those out online and, um, you know, just to my surprise, I found that they were way out of my budget. They were asking two, three hundred dollars for one of those flagpoles. So uh, typically, you know, my my mindset is oh, I'm just make one. It's got to be easy. And so I started shopping uh, steel prices. And again, I kind of came into some pretty expensive price points. It was still out of my budget just for the steel, like a three inch piece of steel. So I thought, gosh, there's gotta be a cheaper way of doing this. And so I kind of started researching it online a little bit and I was sifting just through some pictures and I saw a wooden flagpole. And I thought, that's brilliant. You know, I'll just make it out of wood. I'll just find a straight tree on my property and uh, do it that way. And then all I need is just the pulleys and um, and then I'll be there. So that's kind of what I, and plus I like the look out of it, it look of it. It kind of had a much more traditional kind of a Fort Henry type, you know, uh, theme to it. So anyways, that's what I ended up falling on. And uh, I ended up building my first flagpole out of out of a tree and it turned turned out great. So. Uh, as you saw in the intro of this video, that's the flagpole I did about two years ago. Um, it is a little weathered because one of the things I didn't do, which I'm going to do this time, is stain it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead for this video and remove that old flagpole and we're going to replace it with a new one. And I'm going to dress it up because I have some ideas. I'm going to show you exactly uh, how, how to do that and the things you'll need. So let's uh, go ahead and go up into the woods here and see if we can't find ourselves a really nice straight tree. All right, I think we found the perfect tree. So uh, let's get cutting, huh? That was a stupid joke. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see it, but anyways, I have uh, located the perfect tree, exactly what I'm looking for. It's probably close to 20 feet, probably around 18 feet or so. Um, and um, it stays nice and consistent from the base to the tip. Uh, so I'm looking for something that's basically no more than like three inches at the base, three and a half inches at the base, and doesn't taper much more than like two and a half inches or three inches at the top. So, uh, and then obviously I want something that's nice and straight. So. I've located my tree. Um, obviously, I'm on my own property here, so I'm not just like going in into the middle of the woods and cutting trees down. So, uh, and I have more than enough trees. A lot of these trees actually have to be um, just cut down for fire reasons. But anyways, I'm gonna get this tree cut and then bring it out and then kind of show you how I get it processed. All right. All right, now we got this tree cut down. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Ontario Rat 7 knife to start uh, chopping some of these some of these branches off and uh, so I can get it out of this, this thicket here a little easier, so stay tuned. So before I uh, pull this tree all the way out, I'm just going to go ahead and make use of this area and uh, finish trimming it up so I can get this thing streamlined and get it out of here. All right, 
So now that we got the tree down from the hill, I went ahead and propped it up on this fence here and I'm gonna go ahead and take my knife and start skinning the bark off. As you can see, the bark just comes right off of here. Super easy when it's fresh like this. All right, so now that I got all the bark skinned off the tree here, um, now I'm just gonna have to wait. So I'm gonna give this probably two weeks to dry out uh, before I start doing anything to it. So, yep, see you see you back here in two weeks. Okay, so it's been two weeks and this flagpole is nice and dried out. Uh, as you can see, I have this pole strapped down on this uh, on this railing here with some duct tape. And the reason I did that was um, to see if I couldn't work out. There was some, a little bit of a bow to this tree. And so I thought I'd just give it a shot and duct tape it and see if I couldn't work the bow out. Um, obviously it's not something that's totally necessary, but, um, and I'm not even sure how well it worked, but we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the tape here and kind of peer down this, this pole and see how straight it is. Um, and then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna head over to this table and I'm gonna show you all the components and tools you're gonna need to complete this project. So stay tuned. Okay, so as you can see, it's obviously, it's not 100% straight, uh, but once this is standing up, trust me, you won't even be able to tell that it has these, uh, this waviness to it. So um, just go ahead and kind of give you bird's view of what we got going here. And just keep in mind, you know, the uh, this this first two feet here is going to be underground. So, but yep, it's all nice and dry. As you can see, it's kind of starting to split, but uh, there's no no need to worry about these splits. Um, once I get this all stained, um, it will. Um, It'll all get sealed, sealed, and uh, be just fine. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next step here. Okay, so these are all the components and tools and materials you're gonna need to complete this flagpole. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through it real quick uh, in no particular order, but uh, this is the stain that I'm gonna be applying to this flagpole. Um, this is an Arbor Coat from Benjamin Moore. It's just a really good exterior stain product. Uh, highly recommend this. So core to stain is probably gonna be, I don't know, about 20 bucks or so. But just make sure that if you do decide to treat your flagpole with anything, just make sure that it's an exterior product. Uh, obviously I got a rag to apply the stain. Uh, this here is just a exterior sealant. Um, it's just some sealant that I actually use for my uh, trailers and campers and stuff to seal it from water. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of this to put at the top of the flagpole just to keep the top of the flagpole from totally drying out um, when the water hits it. So you can pretty much use any type of exterior sealant uh, for that. Uh, the other thing we have here is a 3 16 nylon rope. Just and obviously this is pretty self-explanatory. It's to pull the flags up and down. Uh, just make sure that whatever rope you get, uh, that it's um, pretty rigid, doesn't have a lot of elasticity to it. It's just really firm. Uh, this here is a clamp. This is kind of just the system I have uh, in place, but I use this clamp to hold the rope onto the flagpole. So that way, you know, once I pull the flags up, uh, they don't come, they don't come uh, crashing down. 
These two things here are the eye bolts, and this is just one goes at the top, one goes at the bottom, and the rope basically just runs through these two holes here. These here are the, these are actually called flag snap swivels, I believe. Um, and these obviously are just to hold the flags in place um, off the rope. So I got four of them so we can fly two flags. And I'll make sure to leave links in the description where you can get all this stuff. Uh, the next thing I have here is a grinder with a sanding disc on it. Um, you can do the sanding by hand or you can use a sander or whatever. Just for today, I'm using a grinder with a sanding disc. And basically, I'm just going to go through now that the flagpole is dry and I'm going to sand it down really good, especially where all the knots are and get all those burrs off uh, to make sure that the pole is really nice and smooth so the <clears throat> uh, flag and rope can go up and down uninterrupted without getting caught on anything. So pretty critical step. Uh, this here is just some drill bits that I'm going to use to countersink for these eye bolts here. And then the last thing, I have some copper green, and this is what I'm gonna be using to soak the first two feet of the pole. And it's basically what it is, is just a wood preservative. So um, you treat your wood with this, the wood that's gonna be underground, and it will keep the wood from rotting uh, that's in the ground. You could probably burn it. I've heard of like different methods on preserving wood to put underground. Um, this is the only one I know for sure that's pretty tried and true, but um, I've heard of guys using like motor, like used motor oil. I don't know if that's legal or not, but uh, you know, used motor oil should preserve wood. And um, you can use a product that's called like bitchethane and it's like a tar, tar tape. They use it for roofing and you can wrap the bottom of the uh, pole with that too. And that will keep it Basically, what you're trying to do is just keep the um, keep it waterproof and keep the water from rotting out the bottom of your pole. So that's pretty much everything you're going to need to complete this project. So I'm going to go ahead and get my my uh, grinder set <laughs> set up, and then we're going to start sanding this flagpole. So all right. Okay, so now that we had the flagpole completely sanded, I'm gonna go ahead and lean it up against the wall over here and stick it straight into this gallon of copper coat. That way the base of it that's gonna be underground will be uh, nice and fully penetrated with this product. So uh, let's head over there and get this thing soaking. Okay, so I'm just taking my brush, just brushing it up to my line here, just making sure this portion of the of the pole is just nice and penetrated with this preservative. Okay, we're back. The end of the pole here has soaked efficiently in the copper coat. And so now the rest of the pole is ready for stain. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the end of the pole sealed up and then we'll get the hardware on and then we'll get this flag pole in the ground. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, camera resituated so you can see how I apply the stain. Okay, so I'm just gonna apply the sealant here to the end. And again, this is just to kind of keep this pole protected at the top from exposure. And uh, it'll just help from the pole splitting uh, when it's exposed to all the elements. So any type of exterior caulk will be just fine. So 
All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and let that dry and then we'll start getting this stain. Okay, we're gonna start applying the stain now. Again, this is just an exterior uh, semi-transparent stain. Uh, just the color I picked was Spanish moss. And this is a Benjamin Moore product called Arbor Coat. So um, it's actually a really good product. It'll last a really long time. I'm not familiar with this color, but um, it looked pretty nice on the samples that I saw, but uh, it's a little grayer than I thought it'd be, but I think it'll look pretty cool. So again, I mean, you can treat uh, your flagpole any way you'd like, um, just as long as it's an exterior product. I know uh, I've seen guys like just burn them, um, you know, and that and that looks pretty cool. I mean, you could just essentially put it up just like this and let the weather just kind of weather it naturally. But it's not going to last quite as long um, as <clears throat> if you were to treat it. So. All right, so I'm just going to keep at this until we get this whole thing stained. And then let it dry and then i'll probably put a second coat of stain on here so Okay, so now that the pole is completely stained, I'm gonna go ahead and start pre-drilling for the first eyelet at the top of the pole. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and put the eye bolt, not, not necessarily at the top, but probably, I don't know, four or five inches uh, down from the top. So go ahead and start my pilot hole here. Go ahead and put our eye bolt in here. All right, so that's pretty much it. And I just kind of end it so that it's uh, it's straight with the uh, lined up with the pole like that. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and put the eye bolt at the bottom at the 64 inch mark. Um, it's not really that critical where you put it, just I like to put it about here because that's about close to waist height. Um, it just makes it easier to access the rope. So that's where I'm gonna uh, put the eye bolt. Okay, so just make sure that when, uh, before you drill this hole that it's, it's nice and lined up with the eye bolt at the top of the flagpole. So as you can see, we're nice and straight with the eye bolt at the top of the flagpole there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and measure out the length of rope that I'm gonna need. And basically, all I'm gonna do is just run it from the eyelet to this eyelet and back, creating a loop. And then I'll go and uh, tie a knot and uh, get it as the whole rope as taut as I can, so. Okay, so now I got both lengths of rope uh, through the eye, eye bolt at the top, and I'm down here, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead before, I'm not gonna cut this exactly to fit because I still have to tie a knot at the end and I still need to fit my 
um, my flag clips on this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give myself a couple feet of excess rope and then, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the eyelets on. Okay, so now I have the uh, rope cut. I'm just gonna go ahead and burn the ends. So it doesn't fray, fray away there. All right. Okay, so I ended up actually having to move my workspace because it was just getting too hot out here. My camera kept shutting down. But anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put these, these uh, flag swivels on. It's extremely easy. You basically just create a little loop like that. And then you put it through this end here and then you pull it like that and then hook it around the clip here and then just pull tight and that is it and then um, depending on how big your flag these things are really easy to adjust so if the eyelets you know are further apart than usual you know you can just move these around uh, as you see fit and also just kind of move them to keep the flag as taut as possible so pretty pretty easy so i'm just going to go ahead and get the rest of these on here and then uh then we're almost to the finish line so all right so i'm just going to go ahead and uh clip the flag on here just that way i can get a nice accurate measurement on where i want my snap swivels to be Let's see see that Put the other end there like that and then we'll just pull these pull these tight like let's see here something like that <laughs> okay so yeah right about there something like that okay so now so now that we have i got basically the uh the flags pulled all the way to the top as high high up as they'll go and now what i want to do is i want to try to create tie this so that this this line here going both ways is as taut as possible so unfortunately i'm not an ex uh, not expert there's only one uh cinch knot that i no works and i'm just going to go ahead and make a loop at this end like that just kind of a square knot so i just create a little loop there and i'm going to take the other end of my rope and guide it through here like this and then just cinch pull that down cinch as best as i can so this is just super tight almost like a guitar string and then i'm going to go ahead and hopefully you can see that just put a little knot in there like that and there we have it um you know it's kind of an ugly knot i know uh Corporal's Corner is probably rolling his eyes and laughing hysterically right now. But anyways, this, it, it, you know, it, it served the purpose. And I actually like to have kind of a lot of meat rope at the end here. That way it allows me to, uh, once the flags are raised, I can put my clamp on here and cinch it down to this eye hook really good. So, yeah. So now all I have to do is just cut this excess off and, uh, melt it down and we are good okay so once you've established where you want to put your pole you're going to definitely want to go ahead um i guess this isn't like a total necessary thing but if you can go ahead and get yourself a post hole digger it's just going to make your life a lot easier when digging the hole for your for your flagpole so i'm going to go ahead and start digging okay now that we have the hole dug i'm going to go ahead and get this flagpole in the ground
All right, so one of the things I did, because I don't want this flagpole to be like super permanent, but I do want it to be strong enough, you know, so that the wind doesn't knock it down. So I went ahead and I, I put some gravel and a couple rocks at the bottom of this hole. And that way it just helps with uh, drainage when the ground gets wet and keeps the, uh, it keeps the pole dry, keeps it from rotting. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I have a little bit of uh, concrete and I'm just gonna put about, out, I don't know, six seven inches of concrete down there just to kind of give it a little rigidity and keep it extra firm um, and then i'm going to go ahead and pack in the rest of the dirt and pack it real well um, so i'm going to go ahead and do that right now and i'm probably going to use probably a couple of these blocks to keep this pole straight up and keep it from moving around while i'm doing all this so all right stay tuned okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a dry pour um, I've never tried this out before, but I've seen it done. Um, and again, it's not something that's too critical. Um, I just need it to uh, firm up a little bit around the pole. So I'm going to go ahead and dump uh, about a half of this what's left in this concrete bag in the hole and then uh, pour some water in there and just let it saturate that way. So. Okay, so if you want to be super precise about getting your flagpole nice and plumb, just go ahead and use a level and uh, you can just plumb it up like this and like that. And like that. It's good enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead, get these blocks, get this pole set. Um, set firm and then i'm going to add some water to the uh, hole and get all the uh, cement and gravel around it packed real tight all right so now we got our flags attached to the rope here i'm just going to go ahead and show you how they move up and down the pole so just like that super smooth super easy the ropes nice and taut our pole is sturdy and strong and straight and that is what it looks like beautiful super simple uh, extremely affordable all right everyone well there you have it your very own homestead flag so um, if you have any questions uh, about the about how I made this flag go ahead and ask in the comment section I'll try to get back to you uh, as soon as I can um, but uh, the one thing I don't think I ever mentioned was how tall the flag was overall so the entire flag was 24 feet and with the two feet in the ground it's about 22 feet so um, yeah it turned out great I couldn't be happier and uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button. Uh, also, if you would like to be notified about my live streams, I do a live stream every Saturday night. Um, go ahead and hit that uh, notification bell on the screen there and you could be notified when I go live. So, all right, again, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and until the next time, stay prepared.